hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. RafaelTecnicantica.com. It is 20 to 3 in, the, in Spain. It's uh, the sunny outside, but it's cold in this beach. Yeah, it's pretty cold. Uh, I don't like cold. Today's video, long, long video. Why? Because I really feel like it. I want to bore you guys to death. So we're going to cover YouTube channels and uh, education, information and disinformation. Um, we're going to cover uh, vocal release and mm, sort of a bel canto versus I can belt too. Opa. Yeah, so, so you know, it's so can can belt just like belting um, uh, versus uh, legit sort of operatic production, and uh, why, how, etc. Et so you know, I, I never have a prompt, I never have a script. I just improvise as I go by. I go by. Every time I sort of uh, I I talk to a student, I get inspired by all these questions and I managed to I mean most of the time I believe uh, I managed to answer these people's questions and then I think I gotta make a video about it um, uh, you know I, why not and and again I do not have a script because uh, you know, in some videos I've done it with you know with when, when I was dealing with sort of tons of historical and hysterical factors here and there but when, when, when it comes to technique and all that jazz, uh, honestly, I, I couldn't do it. And I, I know that I'd repeat uh, things such as, you know, you know, you know, you know. Um, I, I, then I, I listen to myself and say, oh, man, you suck. But anyway, that's me. That's me. Take it or leave it. Uh, your choice. So let's, let's try to make sort of a order of the day. YouTube channels educational, uh, informational, or, you know, disinformation. I'm going to avoid names because I don't want to hate and bleed on people. But some of my students brought it up that there are some channels in which, for example, they, um, they, they broadcast these wonderful singers of the past, in the golden era of, of singing, to my mind and to some people's minds, and, and then they sort of compare it to contemporary singing. And then they say, okay, so this is right and this is wrong. And I, I like the fact that they bring this topic and they, they say, okay, you know, example, the everlasting, you know, Franco Corelli, for example. And say, oh, you know, this guy singing this, it's the way to do it and this is the way it should sound and these other guy mm, it's not doing it in a right way and maybe they will they will add because this guy is doing this and this guy is doing that okay great now keeping in mind that there has been only one franco corelli and there will be no other franco corelli ever ever even if you you would bring uh, Corelli himself and tell you, oh, you know how I did that uh, diminuendo on on a B flat in Aida, I basically excuse my, my excuse my French, I fucked up on a note, and I was running out of breath and I just I was dying on it and that's how I I um, started to produce that and I figured out that that was the way. But then he would go on saying, oh, but you know, you have to be born with that. Like, you cannot, not everybody is um, sort of uh, capable of doing such things. That would lead to people attempting to actually die on that B-flat. And yeah, I, I, this is a bit extreme. Hurting themselves or at least getting extremely frustrated because... You know, even if you listen to it a million times and then perhaps you see an interview with a singer, not a teacher, a singer, um, that is, is sort of describing what he or she personally feels in that very moment, unless that very singer is 
you know, a, a, a wonderful teacher as well, or a teacher, not a wonderful teacher, a teacher as, as well. And, and that's his or her research on it to actually reach his students so they can recreate those sensations by themselves and in their own terms. Sorry, but it's not, it's not going to be useful. So again, I, I, I have a slight issue with those kind of, of um, channels that, that kind of content. And yet again, I'm not by no means on in any way saying that I am, no, I'm, I'm just a simple guy. You know, I, I love that. Uh, when I was when I studied Aikido back in the day, um, my my sensei had studied with this Japanese guy, um, Japanese sensei who was uh, amazing apparently, and uh, that lived in France. And he's uh, when people sort of adulated him and complimented him, he would say, "Oh, je suis," uh, uh, he'd say, "je suis un, un petit bonhomme," or "je je suis." Je ne suis qu'un petit bonhomme. I am only a nice little guy. Well, I like to describe myself as such. I'm honestly, I'm no one's really like super natural. Uh, you know, this is a you know uh, wunderkind or anything like that. No, I'm just me. All right, so that out of the way. I and, and even though I can demonstrate mm, through my capabilities. And uh, honestly, my goal is for my students to surpass me in any way or form and, and really at least, you know, do, do it by themselves. Um, you need to explain what's happening to the best of your capabilities. And, and that goes really against that secrecy. Oh, this is a secret. Do not. No, no, nobody should. Man, you know, there is nothing new under the sun. And, and you need to research and you need you need to actually research research your students and get that feedback so you can offer them the best of your tools and knowledge experience and and so forth and, and, and so on and so forth so this goes hand in hand with the second topic uh, legit voice and belting and what's happening nowadays in in operatic houses now I love musical theater. I love belting. I love Broadway. I love the West End. I have the utmost respect for um, the artists that, that perform nowadays and those that have performed back in the day. And again, I'm not going to say names because why? Uh, now, is there a difference? Yes. In, in the last video about belting, I sort of stated a few it was like you know preliminaries like what is the difference the the the, the sort of the bulk difference however there are more technical um differences in that what is happening nowadays is that in the opera house you have people that sing lyric lyrical music so classical music opera with a musical theater voice and it's not the same. It's not the same. And now I'll, I'll, I'll go into the technical part of it. And, and maybe you will understand why I believe so. Now, mind you, they are compatible. Yes, they are compatible. And as a wink, you know, last time I said that um, some musical theater pieces require a more classical orientated sound. The Phantom of the Opera, Les Miserables. Mm, I wouldn't go Miss Saigon, but I would go to uh, I don't know the, the the old ones. You know the the the, the old Broadway sort of music. Even as I as I think I said it before, um, Schoenheim. Those are for me contemporary operas. Sometimes you know he uses all these colors, but again there is a difference. So. If you have people nowadays going on a stage with a, with a light voice, with this twangy semi-musical theater sound performing Puccini, some people are going to detract from that 
but then the other part of the audience are going to say, oh, you're so old fashioned and then you're, you're stuck in the past. And yeah, but, you know, these were operas composed in the 19th century, uh, maybe early 20th century. And they require a, cent a certain timbre, a certain color, a certain voice production, a certain volume. Uh, and as Giacomini put it, you know, in, in, in very wise words, you need a theater voice with no amplification. And honestly, the, the color of, an, of a voice that does not need amplification to be heard is different than that of can, can use amplification because colors are going to be different, overtones are going to be different. And every piece requires a certain type of color, if you may, not voice production. Uh, okay, so I, I needed to get out of my chest and it's already 11 minutes into the video, but I got it off my chest because I'm always thinking about it, whatever I go, oh, I gotta make a video about it. Now, I was, um, I was teaching yesterday and, and I have a very, very dear student from, from the States. And it's a guy that basically breathes singing, eats singing, uh, and, and, you know, drinks singing. And the guy is full on studying, researching. Uh, he's exactly, the, you know, the, the student that Jerry Hadley would have loved to have, to be honest. So, you know what, you know that I'm talking about you. So, greetings and blessings. Now, he told me, uh, why, why? You know, for example, Mario Lanza. How did Mario Lanza manage to sing this sort of popular music back in the 40s, 50s, and then, you know, go into this full blast, legit squillo uh, voice? And my answer was, well, he was playing with his larynx. And, then, and you, you go, but he's, this is not contemporary stuff. I mean, you're talking a guy that, although he's a bit controversial because Mario Lanza. Maybe we'll, I'll make a, a video about him. But um, he, you know, he, he produced these tones that then later on when he would sing any opera excerpts, you know, you just have to see uh, The Great Caruso, for example, or, you know, anyway, it's all these recordings, the, the, the voice, the color is different. Uh, now, he studied under, under Rosati. And Rosati brought on, you know, he was like the teacher of both the, the you know, the, the, the entire musical mm, atmosphere in New York. So he was teaching people that would go into the Metropolitan Opera and Broadway. So he knew, he knew, he knew what to give to each, what tools to go on and, and so on. So even Beniamino Gigli studied under Rosati for a while. So, you know, Cotogna and then but Benjamin is, is, is it's a different creature, anyway, okay? It's famous for this falsetone stuff. Right, so th this is what I, you know, I needed to get off my chest, and this is my preaching for the day. So now let's go into the technical aspects, and uh, especially the release of the voice. Release. Now, everything in singing is about releasing. And no, I'm not going to get into the whole vibrato thing because if you start going around and messing around, especially with, with vibrato and oh, you got to do two pulses of it or you're going to get into trouble. Same as with the tongue. There are two things that are pretty taboo in, in singing. And this is something that McCray told me back in the day that one is the tongue, get it, get the fuck out of the way. And the other one is vibrato. Don't mess with it. Why? Because it's a natural thing. Everything in singing is regulated by air. And yes, everybody would tell you, oh, you have to sing on the air. And all these wise guys will tell you, wise girl, the wise wise, you know what I mean? Um, they will tell you, oh, yes, open and support. Okay. Uh, some other guys will tell you, this is the hell of your voice. All right, great. But... The, those things are very abstract, okay? They're very abstract. And uh, even as a singer, and I'm saying this, you know, from, from my own experience, as a singer, it doesn't matter how many times they tell you that. You, unless, you, you know, you, you're 
good at it or too stupid and, and you just woo -woo, you, you you immediately incorporate it you will have a hard time same as raising your soft palate for example all right so what's happening here yeah singing is about the air but not about breath management or you know uh, yeah all that kind of mumbo jumbo because then things start to get complicated so let's simplify things I always tell my students that <laughs> like singing is like whistling yeah you're whistling through these lips yeah and then but please don't start going because it's stupid hey it's plain stupid at least for me and for my students now uh, if you try to remove obstacles to allow these you know folds to vibrate freely and thus permitting allowing that the larynx that's that's it, it its job that you know the difference between for example legit voice operatic sound is gonna be a more you know a tilted larynx or a tilted thyroid cartilage that allows this expansion and this depth the folds are gonna vibrate freely and then of course that sound is going to be reproduced wherever whatever sympathetically needs to be um, for another video was we talk about resonances we're gonna go this is gonna be an hour long so if you especially on the higher for, for, for men especially in the mid high you know passaggio right mm -mm. but yeah you were talking about for a tenor would be F, F sharp um, G for example and then for baritone would be around D E flat uh, bass just go a third lower maybe if you just go and give it an uppercut the whole time there is not gonna be release and you're gonna get stuck okay uh, regardless if, if the, the, the sound is open or if the sound is covered now for females this is very evident when they go into the chest voice and they go into the call of the voice and around I would say you know depending sopranos would be around uh, e, a flat a flat a B flat they start to get a bit rocky and and depending on what they, they're gonna switch very soon to their head voice or or they're gonna again grab it here you know like like really um, squeeze it so no when, whenever you feel like that the thing is or the thought should be release the Kraken right so that's in, in serving in uh, classical music if I have this arpeggio for example go into an F right and I just want to sing it open right and I just go La okay that's an open sound my larynx is down 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 and the sound is open and the sound is released okay so how do I imagine this in order to release well as I ascend you know here uh, right here yeah I think that the accelerator in, instead of just going down and pushing on it I'm just gonna lay back so it's as long as I spin the air right in there nothing is gonna happen now is this a pretty sound mm, I don't know I don't, I don't think it's particularly pretty if I cover it it's a bit of a more attractive sound maybe right now you need both both so don't start talking about passage and there is only one way to do it no and different vowels do different things now as you have noticed that vibrato is constant I'm keeping that note alive it's not a fixed note and my larynx is low it is down now, what happens when I'm belting all right belting the thing is that my larynx 
is not going to be as low. In fact, it's going to be slightly high. Does that mean that it's going to be squeezy and trap? No. In musical theater, because of the style, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a fixed note and then I'm going to release it. And no, it, does it has nothing to do with volume and power. No, belting is screaming. But you got to know how to scream. So if I were doing this on uh, an F again, in belting, I would go like this. La. And that's belting, right? And that is release. If you've noticed at the beginning, the note was fixed and then pa 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 pa, pa I allow to allow the voice to uh, to vibrate. Now if you've noticed in both emissions, you you could see veins around my neck because this is something that for example a student brought it out because I'm a producer fuck with that you know I said okay send me a, a video about you know with him singing dude unless your your head becomes like red raw like a like a tomato and is start to explode worry not yeah and, and you know it's like if, if you know some vascularity is okay obviously there are certain degrees of that all right so no worries now you say, okay, but this is only an F. And actually, when you, you belt, it sounds higher. True. Why? Because your larynx is higher. And the sound is a bit more shallow. Now, would you be able to do this higher? Absolutely. So I'll set two, two examples, for example. Well, redundance. Now, uh, Miss Saigon. Um, you go at the end, you know, actually, right in the middle, let me try Yo, help, help, help me try it. Eh? Um, help me try. Right? Boom. And it, you release the note. When I, uh, I have some tenors singing the Phantom of the Opera, there is a phrase, actually, it's an arrangement that I listened to back in the day uh, from Alessandro Safina that uh, he recorded the music of the night and when when he goes out okay, here and listen to the music of the night and that's the original and it's for a barry tenor right now i he, he made an arrangement and i i used it a lot in concerts and you go and listen to the music of the night. And you go to that F. Now, this is in belting. Belting. If you want to uh, make sort of a more classical sound, you go. And listen to the music of the night. You would sort of cover it to make a more classical sound, right? Now, then when he tries, you know, he, he adds another one and, and he goes to an A-flat. Uh, so, dun, dun, dun. and then, music of the night. And again, if you want to do it in a classical way, you would go, music of the night. Oh, all right. But if you want to do it in sort of in a belting way, you're going to go music of the night. Ah, right? That's going to be the one. Both of them are suitable. Now, the second one, obviously, with a mic, is going to sound much better. Now, let's go to the, the, the icing on the cake. Why release? Because the minute you trap stuff, regardless where your larynx is, the sound is going to collapse. There's no point in singing a high note or for women, sort of a mixed mm, note if you're going to squeeze the, the, the hell out of it. It's not going to work. So 
again, going back to some examples uh, in the operatic literature for tenor, you know. Uh, <laughs> not squeezing anything. I am just releasing that from a low larynx position because that is what lyric classical music requires. If I were doing that, and Puccini obviously would come out of his grave and imagine that also because um, Butterfly and Miss Saigon is basically you know, the same sort of story. So Miss Saigon was inspired um, by Madame Butterfly. And I would go all belty on it, and I would go. Di Letizia e da mar. That would be belting. Now, this is what is happening today in the opera houses, boys and girls. And this is what I sort of denounce. This is not the sound. Uh, in fact, they would do this and adding a lot of uh, to it to make it worse. So to wrap things up and I go to the beginning of the video, uh, it's very good to illustrate old school singing and say, oh, that was right and this is wrong and perhaps, you know, give a, a tiny description about it. But it's not right to leave people to their own devices. So then you know, they can buy your online course or they can immediately, you know, clickbait. No, no, for me, that's not, mm, it's amoral, okay? And, and that's that's my view and that's why I'm 26 into a video and singing all this stuff. So, how do you release the voice? Less is more. As you ascend and as actually you go down, stop trying to make the, the, the sound big allow it to get big release if you're having difficulties and you're blasting the hell out of a sound imagine a crescendo through it so the the exercise you know in spanish por antonomasia would be this one and it's great to go to mesa di voce and i will go already to a, a g on it so i can illustrate so you just go chest basically head and then lean on it very softly to produce this sort of legit voice. The larynx is in the same position. It never changes, not from chest, not to head, always in the same position. And no, you don't do that, you know, muscularly jamming it down because then it's going to collapse. And then you go in and out, in and out, something like this. Is no break. I take it an octave higher. Okay, so that's it. And you will not be pushing. You start doing that back and forth, back and forth, and I guarantee your voice is going to thank you. And then you transition about it. And that's how you get used to releasing in the voice. Now, when you do belting, you're not going to need that low larynx position. But also, it's going to be a bit more, like I would say, tougher to, you know, do a diminuendo on it. Because you have no space, unless you all of a sudden go into this U position and then you can go into this head uh, area. And, all right, because again, if I, if I were going, uh, you know, la, the break would be there. It's going to be a bit tougher. You can do it by having a lot of balls and say, okay, I'm going to do a crescendo on that, on those thin folds to make it thicker and then you know, come in and out. Try it, but don't hurt yourselves. And remember that this is only a video, educational, if you may, but 
there is only so you, you there is only so much you can learn from a video. All right? Okay, hey, 30 minutes into it. Not bad for today. Okay. Like and subscribe if you have enjoyed the video. If you don't like the content, please do not watch any of it, of it whatsoever and uh, if you need help, well you know where I am. Have a good day everybody. Thank <laughs> you.